Okay, in the next three videos, we're going to look at piecewise defined functions. And in the first video, we'll look at how to graph piecewise defined functions. In the second video, we'll look at how to evaluate them. And then finally, in the third video, we'll look at how to find the limits of piecewise defined functions. Now, first of all, what a piecewise defined function is, it's actually exactly what it sounds like. It's a function that's defined in pieces. And here's an example of one. Actually, this one's got three pieces. And the way to read it would be this. If you were actually going to say it, it would be f of x is equal to x plus 4, as long as x is less than a negative 2. Then it's defined to be x squared, uh, whenever x is between a negative 2 and a positive 2. And then finally, it's defined to be 6 minus x, whenever x is greater than 2. Now, if you're going to graph these, the first thing I would do is to actually split recognize the intervals that it splits up into. So first of all, they have what I call like to call split points, and the split points are where it divides. Now this one goes from x is less than a negative 2, and then it goes from negative 2 to a positive 2. So the split point, and I think I'll put a circle around it right here, is actually this right here. So that is going to give me... Uh, the split point, which is a negative 2. Now, <clears throat> what I would suggest you do when you graph these things is go ahead and graph them on the graph. So what I'm going to do is at negative 2, I'm just going to divide the graph up into intervals. So I'll put uh, an interval that goes from here down to here. So there's the first interval at negative 2. Then the second interval uh, is this interval right here. So it goes from here at positive 2. So the first split is from negative 2, second split is at 2. So I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll come up to positive 2 and I'll draw a vertical line through here. And again, this is just to uh, divide it up into intervals. Now what that does, it divides it up into this interval from whenever x is less than a negative 2. It divides it up into this interval whenever x is between negative 2 and 2. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, this interval, whenever x is greater than 2. So it's like you have an interval 1, um, an interval 2, and an interval 3. So three intervals. So you can kind of think of it. This is the first interval. This is the second interval. And this is the third interval. Now, when you graph these, um, it's a little bit confusing to see f of x is equal to these things, and uh, they're all clumped together. So my suggestion when you graph them is to actually each one, write each one out as a separate thing. So first of all, looking at interval 1, whenever x is less than a negative 2, it's defined to be x plus 4. So I'll just go ahead and write this down as y is equal to x plus 4. So just put it out as a single function. Then in the second interval, it's defined to be y is equal to x squared. And finally, in the last interval, it's defined to be y is equal to 6 minus x. So it looks like that. Now, if you graph each one of these things separately, the way I would normally do it is graph the entire line and then just erase the part that you're not interested in. So, for example, if I graph this, now this is in the form y is equal to mx plus b. So you've seen that notation before. Um, this is the y-intercept, this is the slope. So on this line, uh, the y-intercept would be 4, and the slope is a positive 1. So what I'm going to do is graph the entire line, and then just keep the part that I'm interested in. So the y-intercept is 4, so I'll put a point here at 4. Now, uh, the slope is 1, so really it goes over 1 and up 1, over 1 and up 1, or it could also go this way, over 1 and down 1. <coughs> so I'll do it here, uh, over 1 and down 1, over 1 and down 1, over 1 and down 1, and so on. And then if you wanted to, you can continue it over here. Now, if you were to put these together, say from this point right here, and actually complete that line, the line would look like this and it goes off forever. Then what I would do, I'm only interested in the part of this line wherever it's less than a negative 2. So you can just go ahead and take your eraser then and erase the part that you're not interested in. So I'm going to erase it from here and down to here. So my suggestion is draw the whole line and then come back and erase whatever part you're not interested in. 
Now, the only thing you've got to decide is this, is at the end point where this thing approaches the green line, do you need to have a circle or a dot? And just a reminder, uh, if you include the point, you put a dot. If you don't include the point, you put a circle. And it depends on what you've got over here. So if I look at this to decide whether you need the circle, it depends on whether it has an equal sign. So if it's less than or equal to, if it has an equal sign, you put a dot. If it doesn't have an equal to, you put a circle. So in this first interval, it's less than negative 2. And so what I'll do is wind up putting a circle right here. So that means not including the point. So I've got the first part of it done. Now go ahead and graph this second part. And again, just graph each one as a separate part and then erase the part that you don't want. So first of all, the best way to do this is just pick some points and I'll just pick some. So if x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, and I'll plot a point. Now this is just going to be a uh, parabola, y is equal to x squared. When x is equal to 1, no, uh, y is equal to 1, I've got a point right here. When x is equal to 2, y would be equal to 4, I'd have a point here. And then finally, when x is equal to 3, y would be equal to 9, and I have a point way up here somewhere. So maybe something like this. Now, uh, if I went in the negative direction, if x is negative 1, y is 1. If x is a negative 2, y is 4. And then finally again, when x is a negative 3, when you square that, you get 9, you get another point, something like this. And again, what I'll do is just, I'm going to connect just the part that I'm interested in. So I go from here to here, up like this. And again, if you wanted to, you can continue on and take this thing on up to 9. And again, I'll go from here up to here. Uh, I'll go ahead and continue it on to here. And then again, if you want to, just continue it on up to uh, 3 squared is 9. And then what I would do next is take your eraser then and erase the part <coughs> that are outside the range that you're interested in. So you're only interested in the graph between negative 2 and 2. So from here to here. So I'll erase all this part and come down erase this and get it just to the point that I'm interested in. I'm also not interested in anything greater than 2, so I'll erase that and get it down to here. So now the only question I have to decide on each one of these endpoints is, is that a dot or a circle? Well, now on the first part over here, uh, whenever x is it's greater than or equal to, so that means including the point. So at negative 2, you're going to have a dot. You include the point. On this one, there is no equal to, so this one's going to be a circle. So it'll look like that. So I've got the second part of it graphed. Now I'll get the third part. Now when I graph the third part, I'm actually going to change it where it looks like this. Y is equal to... And I'm going to switch these two and make it be negative x plus 6. So just switch these two around. Now the only reason I did that, that puts it in the form y is equal to mx plus b. So the y-intercept is going to be 6 and the slope is going to be a negative 1. So if you were to graph this, the y-intercept is 6, the slope is negative 1. So I'll go over 1 and down 1, <clears throat> over 1 and down 1, over 1 and down 1, and so on. So I'll plot a few points, and that's going to give me enough to draw the straight line. So now that I've got some points, I can draw the line from there by going uh, straight down to here. So that's what the line looks like. Now again, it goes on forever this direction. Now again, just like with the other ones, I'll come back and erase the part of the line that I'm not interested in. So all I want is all the graph that goes greater than 2. So I'll erase this part right here. And that gets me down to this. And so that takes care of the third graph. And that's what the thing's going to look like. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and turn off all this green interval stuff where you can see just what the final graph would look like. So let's take a look at that and see what it would be. So if you graphed it, it looks like this. Now, really, I think it helps to put the interval lines in to divide it up into uh, intervals, the three separate intervals. So if you want to, you can put them in like that. Uh, but my suggestion is take each thing and set it up as a separate graph. So you've got the first one from here, the second one is here, third one is here. So graph them as three separate functions. If you need to, graph the complete line, and then just come back and erase the parts that you don't need to. 
and then finally to decide whether you need a dot or a circle just remember if it's got an equal to you need a dot if it doesn't have an equal to then you need a circle because that means not including the point so that's how you graph piecewise defined functions and in the next video we'll look at how to evaluate piecewise defined functions